Ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for being here today to experience the sugarcane rain. Um, guys, could you, uh, could you pay attention a little? Hey, I'm, I'm talking to you. Hello? There we go. That's better. Hey guys, Profe Pablo here, Spanish teacher turned Minecraft engineer. We are going to be making the only sugarcane farm you will ever need. Today we are doing this sugarcane farm. Now, I already have a video uh, on YouTube about one kind of farm similar to this. It's only one story, but this thing is four stories. It's plenty fast. Uh, so fast, in fact, that hoppers have a hard time keeping up. It's stackable. You can make it as high as you want. It works really, really well. And best of all, it doesn't break. I promise I'm not adjusting the video to go faster. This is how fast this thing is filling up. Extremely fast and very easy to build. And without further ado, let's get to it. The first thing you need is a relatively empty piece of land uh, that's kind of flat. It just makes the build easier to do when it's flat. It doesn't have to be completely flat. And you need to be within a chunk. Now, if you don't know what a chunk is in Minecraft, then you need to know. It is kind of the way the Minecraft world is built. And a chunk will load all together and deload, unload, I don't know, uh, stop working when you're far away from it. So if you have a redstone machine that is crossing a chunk border, oftentimes that redstone machine will break. I've had minecarts disappear when I get far enough away from a chunk. I've had my machines break, and this machine will break if you run it across a chunk border. Especially the sugarcane, if you plant it right on a chunk border, this thing's going to break. So you can download a resource pack. I will have a link to mine in the description of this video, uh, and that shows you the chunk borders. Or you could do it this way, and I have to give credit to Silent. I'll have a link to his video. Let's say I want to find a chunk border, and I don't have a resource pack. What you do is you take your coordinates, so you'll have to turn those on in your settings, and we're going to take the number 503. Now, chunk borders are 16 by 16. So what you do is you type in 503 into a calculator, divide by 16, and I get a number with a decimal. The next thing you do is go to the nearest whole number, either up to 32 or down to 31. Let's go down to 31. And you multiply that by 16. Now, why all the 16s? Well, chunk borders are divided into 16 by 16 blocks. So we had 31 times 16 equals 496. That's where a chunk border is gonna be. 496, yep right on the edge of my chunk. And then you can add 16 to that to find the other edge of your chunk. So 512 is the other side of the chunk. There we go. And notice that the 512 is the inside of the other border. So right there. Now we're going to take the last coordinate, 211, and do the same process. Then you could temporarily block this off with blocks and as long as you build this machine inside of these blocks, you're going to be okay. Now I am absolutely terrible at counting, but this is what I think you need for this build. I tried to add it up as best as possible. You will probably have leftovers. And this is only for two rows of the build. At the end, I'll be making four, so you're going to need more supplies. Now, as always on Profe Plays Minecraft, we are going to start with the end in mind. So, excuse my terrible British or Australian accent, not sure what that was. We are going to place down a double chest to collect bone meal. That's right, we are going to make this into a bone meal converter. Because, let's be honest, who needs ridiculous amounts of sugarcane unless you're making paper or bone meal? You're not going to be using it for sugar. Crouch behind this chest, place four hoppers going into the chest or going into each other. 
On top of those hoppers, place a composter on top of each one of those. Place a hopper on each one of those composters. Then on top of these hoppers, place two double chests like this. And on top of these double chests, place two more hoppers. And on top of these hoppers, place your last double chest. Now we want to be able to turn this off and on so that it either just makes sugar cane or makes bone meal. So we are going to place a block here, a block here, and a lever here, and a lever here. Now this part of the build you can do underground. When I was messing with this build, I just have the chest here and then underground I have that whole conversion system. Now behind this chest, you are going to place two hoppers going into the back of the chest. Off the side of this hopper, you are going to stack 12 blocks. On the 12th block, go ahead and place another block on top of that. This is the water channel that is going to collect all of your sugarcane and push it down into this system over here. I usually like to see what's going on in my builds, so I'm going to make this next part with glass. You want to use glass above your chest so you can still open and close it. Go ahead and cover this whole area with glass so that it channels water well. And then you actually want to make this two stories high right now. Guys, please don't let me say the word actually a thousand times in this video, please. Go ahead and add another block here. Okay, water only travels eight blocks. So to make this channel effective, we need to count eight blocks and add an inner layer here. Grab a water bucket. And if you're in survival, you might want to go ahead and make your infinite water source using two water buckets. Grab your bucket of water, place the source right there on this block, and then grab another bucket of water and place another source right there on that block. What this system does is it pushes the sugar cane down here so fast that it'll go in the first hopper and sometimes the second hopper, causing your chest to fill up twice as fast. Again, I like the look of glass, but if you want to, you can make this anything you want. In fact, I think I'm going to change this back wall to block. Oh yeah, I like that better. Now, build some blocks along the back row, making this back row one more higher, and place buttons on the top block on each opening. You actually will not need buttons here. Should look like that. Go ahead and add one more layer of glass. And one more block there. Okay, now the machine begins. Right here next to the chest, going up here, you are going to place a dispenser. Make sure you use a dispenser and not a hopper. May or may have not have made that mistake before. And you'll have a dispenser for each one of these buttons. Over here, you will have 11 pieces of dirt, one for each dispenser. You can place a block here, here, and here to keep the water contained. Then place another block here and here. And on this row, you're going to start your next row of dispensers. Go ahead and make a row of blocks here on the side to contain this water. Okay, now you need a way to contain this water here. You can either come down here and use buttons, but I'm just going to use blocks. There, it makes kind of like a trough thing. Now the reason you need buttons on this side and not on this side is the buttons cause the water to stay contained but the items fall through to the bottom. And this is where your sugar cane is going to fall through. 
Now, as always, the most tedious part of this is filling up all of these dispensers with water buckets. So, here I go. Okay, once water is in all of those dispensers, you can come over here and place a block and another block and then place 11 pistons. Now you won't be able to plant the sugarcane until you have a water source here, so we'll have to wait until we run the redstone to plant the sugarcane. I'm actually going to take a row of blocks and place it here because I think it looks better. I'm going to break this block so I can see the water in here when I have to set up the timing of the water. Back here, you are going to need a block and then you are going to make a column of blocks straight down to the ground. This is going to be your redstone clock. You break this bottom block, create a T using this second block, then break that block, and then you can break this block and every other block all the way up. Place a lever here, if you don't have ground here, you will need a block. Place redstone dust. Place a repeater going into the block with the redstone dust. Place a redstone torch here, 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 all the way until you get up to this level. Turn your clock off. Now, if you're level with a torch here, that's great. If not, and your torch is one below this level, then you need to put a block above that torch. Put two blocks on the side here, two more blocks on the side here, and on this front one with the gaps, you need to run a row of blocks all the way across. Now it's time to run your redstone. Start in the back over here and run it one, two, going straight into this block. Again, if this is a torch, that's fine too. Do the same thing over here on this side, but you're running the redstone on this block and not the dispenser itself. Over here in this back corner, place a block, another torch, another block on top of that torch, and then run blocks all along the back here of these pistons. Run redstone from this last block all the way back. My redstone is green because of a vertical chunk border, which doesn't seem to affect this machine. Turn on your machine. It's gonna be a little loud. Break this redstone and replace it so that the water is alternating. There we go, you might have to try multiple times. Come turn your machine off and plant your sugarcane. Now that you know your water is alternating, you can block up this one. And let's turn it on again to test it, see if it's working. It takes just a second for the sugarcane to start growing. Okay, it is working and the sugar cane is coming down here making bone meal. I'm gonna turn these off so that we can see when sugar cane comes into this chest. Okay, as you can see, sugar cane can get caught here, so you, we need to place glass. That's why we had to do redstone here and not here. I'm actually going to make these walls block just for looks. Congratulations guys, that's the first row. Let's keep going. So I'm going to teach you how to do one more row and then you just apply the same lesson to however tall you wanna make this thing. Let's place a roof on this. Make sure and leave a gap right here. And go ahead and place your buttons right here on this row. Go ahead and place your dispensers. 
You'll need to place them back here as well. So what I do is place a block here and then start placing them next to that block. They're going to be one right above this redstone, or in my case, yellowstone, like the park. Cover the sides so no water escapes. And place your dirt right in the middle. Place a row of blocks here. Leaving that one open so you can see the alternating water. One more block up. And place your pistons. Make another row here and a row all along the back, getting ready for your redstone. Over here, place a redstone torch on top of your column of torches. Place another block, another torch, and a block on top of that torch. Since we have our torches out, place another block here, another torch, another block on top, and a row of blocks back here. Run your redstone. Turn on your clock. <laughs> I forgot to add water buckets. Don't forget to add your water buckets. Okay, after you've filled up all of those with water buckets, then turn on your machine. Break the line and replace it until the water is alternating. Plant your sugar cane. Place the block over here and start blocking this in. Okay, and now you have two rows of sugar cane. As you can see, in just a short amount of time, we already have two stacks and it's quickly moving up to three. Now, I'm happy with this thing with just three levels, but four makes it super productive. Because this thing makes ridiculous amounts of bone meal, you can convert your sugar cane into any plant in Minecraft that accepts bone meal. For example, I have mine going into a system down here, which shoots the bone meal up here into an automatic bamboo farm. And I'm making crazy amounts of bamboo, a lot faster than I can make using a normal bamboo farm. Or if I just want to leave this thing running, I can flip a switch here, and it goes back into my storage silo. I can just leave this thing going until that whole silo is full. I have videos on both this bamboo farm and the storage silo and a micro farm that you can attach to the sugarcane farm and never run out of bone meal or fuel for your food. If you enjoyed this video, be sure and like and subscribe. And that wraps up another episode of Profe Plays Minecraft.